Well, our first step is we want to go ahead and check the fuel pressure on our engine. To do that, you're going to need a fuel pressure gauge, something like this one here. Now, the nice thing about our application is there is a Schrader valve that the gauge will hook directly to. What we want to do is go ahead and hook the gauge to the engine and see what fuel pressure we have. Something else to consider, too, on a fuel gauge is this also has a pressure release, so we can release any pressure that would be in the fuel system. What we want to do is locate where the Schrader valve is on the engine. If you notice where your lines come up to your fuel injection, there's a pressure port. And as a matter of fact, on this vehicle here, it's right here on the rear left. Yeah, there's the cap that covers our port. What I want to do before I connect the gauge to it is I want to put a cloth around that port. And the reason for that is I want to capture any gas that may leak out so it's not standing on top of the engine. Next, we'll put our safety glasses on and go ahead and connect our gauge. Okay, our gauge is on it and it's tight. What we want to do is have an assistant turn the key on for me. And right now we have zero pressure. So that tells us we have a problem somewhere between a fuel pump and up here at the fuel rail. But this is just the beginning of our diagnosis. What we want to do now is just check all the different systems and find out where our problem is. If we think through the possibilities logically, we could have an electrical breakdown somewhere or we could have a faulty fuel pump or a clogged fuel filter. Let's take these one at a time. First, let's look at the electrical circuit. The key to analyzing the electrical circuit is knowing how it works, then isolating each segment of the circuit during operation. A good repair manual will have schematics of all the major electrical circuits in the vehicle. Another good resource for repair information is alldatadiy.com. There you can find the same information that's in a repair manual, including diagrams, parts locations, and repair procedures. All data also has good diagnostic techniques to help track down problems like the one we have with our Tahoe. The first step is to measure the voltage from the battery using a digital voltmeter. This will give us a reference for our voltage drop test that we will do later. Our battery is giving us about 12.4 volts. We will note that and continue with our electrical diagnosis. We're ready to go ahead and diagnose the electrical part of our system here. In order to do that, here's the heart of it right here. This has got a fuse and relay center. Inside this box will house the fuel pump relay and also the fuel pump fuse. We've already checked our battery. We know what our battery voltage is. So what we want to do now is come over to this box. The nice thing about it is it has a legend inside of the box cover that tells us what all the different components are. As we can see, the very bottom relay here is the fuel pump relay. And one thing that I've noticed is there's not actually a fuse on this that's marked for the fuel pump. So there may be a fuse that has more than one purpose. That's where our owner's manual is going to really come into play. Okay, here we go. This is our fuses. Okay, by looking at our book, okay, we can see that that is actually a dual purpose fuse. Not only is it the fuel pump fuse, it's also the battery supply fuse for the engine control module. It's marked ECM-B. Now, by looking at our cover, okay, there it is right there. It's a 20 amp fuse that's marked ECM-B. So we want to check our fuse and check our fuel pump relay. First, I'll pull the fuse from its socket to visually inspect its condition. The wire inside the plastic covering is in good shape. It's in one piece and doesn't look burned. However, when I turn the fuse over, I see that one of the terminals has some corrosion, indicating the fuse has been getting hot, so it'll be a good idea to go ahead and replace it anyway. With the fuse back in place, I'll probe both test terminals with a voltmeter to be sure the voltage is getting through the fuse. As you can see, I'm getting the same voltage on both sides as I had right off the battery, confirming that the voltage is getting to the fuse as it should and that the fuse is indeed good. Next, I'll check the relay that operates the fuel pump. An easy way to do that is to swap it with another good relay of the same type. The air conditioning relay for this Tahoe is right next to the one for the fuel pump. Since I know the AC has been working, that's the one I'll use for the swap.
We still have no pressure, so the relay is not the cause of the problem. We want to go back to the back of the truck and check out the fuel tank unit next. As with any job, to do it right, you'll need the right tools. The nice thing is that jobs today don't require a large, expensive assortment. Basic hand tools are generally all you'll need. The first things you'll need are a socket set, brake line wrench, and a repair manual for your specific vehicle. In case where a specialty tool is required, be sure to check with AutoZone's Loan a Tool program. They have many specialty tools that can help you complete your job a lot quicker and easier. Be cautious when working under the hood. If the engine has been running, components will be extremely hot, so be careful what you touch. When working around a running engine, it is important to be alert and never wear loose clothing or a necktie that can get tangled in belts, pulleys, or the fan. When lifting a vehicle, never work under it until it has been secured with wheel blocks and securely positioned on jack stands. A hydraulic jack alone is never enough. Be cautious when working with oils and chemicals. Many are damaging to the groundwater environment and toxic to people and animals. Never drain or pour chemicals into the ground or sewer systems. Local municipalities and counties offer resources for proper disposal. And always remember to wear your safety glasses. Get the entire DVD for this repair and all other procedures covered in the Complete Car Care Series at your local AutoZone store.